Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. Today I'm going to talk about a feature called Query Multiple of Dapper. Dapper is a micro ORM for .NET Framework and I have done a couple of videos on Dapper and I'll share the link of those videos in the description below. Today the focus will be on Query Multiple and Query Multiple Async. In the past, you might have used dataset and using dataset, you can query multiple result set and get them in a dataset. And then using those multiple result sets, you can use different tables, data tables inside of these data sets to get the data out. Similarly, you can use multiple record set part of data reader also and iterate through the data. Query multiple allows similar outcome, meaning you can write multiple queries and then you can bind them to multiple data model using Dapper. Query multiple is very simple to use, uh, which I'm going to demonstrate. Query multiple allows mapping results to multiple strongly typed objects. Essentially, each query can be mapped to a strongly typed object. And query multiple is very efficient. Query multiple and query multiple async runs multiple queries in a single database and returns a grid reader. The methods supported by the grid reader or the output of the query multiple and query multiple async are read and read async one is asynchronous and one is not asynchronous. Similarly, read first and read first async. Read first or default, read first or default async. Read single, read single async. Read single or default and read single or default async. So to demonstrate this feature, I have created a class called query multiple example. The constructor of this class takes a connection string from the environment variable, which I already set up. And then I'm calling a read async method. So here, what I have done is I created a couple of database tables in a Postgres database. The first one is called employee, which has ID, name, and email, and it has a couple of rows in it. The second one is called address. It should be a DDRWS address. So the second one is address, and it also has a couple of rows right now. And the second one has an ID, an employee ID, the ID of the employee associated to the address, the street, city, state, and zip. These are the attributes of the address table. Now, if I go back to the code, you can see in the query multiple example class. First, I have taken the connection string in the constructor and setting it as a local variable. And then instead of read async, I am using a .NET Postgres SQL connection object for creating connection to the database. And also one thing I wanted to show is that in terms of NuGet packages, I have installed two main NuGet packages. The first one is NPGSQL, which is the Postgres SQL connector for .NET. And the next one is the Dapper, which is the micro ORM, which we are focusing on today. Now first I create a connection object of the Postgres SQL using the class called NPGSQL connection passing the connection string to it. And once the connection is created, and you can see that I'm using the using keyword here because the connection is disposable. It implements the iDisposable interface, hence I'm using using here. And then after creating the connection, I'm calling connection.query multiple async. I'm using the async method. So I'm using await here. And inside the query multiple async, I'm passing a couple of queries here. 
I'm doing select star from employee and select star from address. Now using star is not a best practice. We should be using appropriate column names. That's the good practice. But for the simplicity of the example, I'm just keeping it as star. Now here for the query async multiple output, as I mentioned, it returns a grid reader, as you can see. This also implements an I disposable, hence I'm using, using here as well. And then what I've done is I have created a variable called employees. And here the grid reader, which is returned, which I'm keeping it in multi-record, I'm doing a read async and I am associating it with the employee. So it's going to read all the employee's data and then it's going to automatically map it to the employee object, which I created. An employee object is simple. It's just an ID, name, and email, which matches that of the database table. And then for each employee in the employee's array that I created or I enumerable of employee, I'm just looping through and printing the ID name email. Similarly, what I can do is I can use var address and here instead of getting all the addresses, what I can do is I can do multi record dot read fast. So I can do read fast or read fast or default. Using fast or default can be very useful if you don't know how many records you have. So in this case, if you do just read fast and if there is no record available, it's going to throw an error. But read fast or default is going to return a null employee object. So if you want to handle it that way. So here, sorry, it's not going to return an employee object. It's going to return an address object. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say read fast or default and now I'm going to try to read the address object out of it. I was missing the async. So read fast or default async address. And then what I can do is I can just do a console, console dot write line. Let's try to print the entire address. So let me run this class now. And if I run it, I should see both the employees are listed. So here you can see for the address, it just printed the entire object out. So it did not work as I expected. So let me do this address dot ID. And let me just copy paste this few times. And let's say address dot employee id address dot street street then state and then finally the zip code so let me rerun this and this time i'm going to also increase the font i'm going to increase the font a little bit so that it's visible so you can see here it has one John Doe, John Doe at the rate example.com. There's the first employee. And then two, two Jane Smith, Jane Smith at the rate example.com, both of these. And then for the address record, it printed one for the address ID, one for the employee ID, and then street, state, and the zip code as expected. So these are two ways. One is read async, and another one is read fast. Or default and you can see as a part of the single query multiple we are able to get both the query out of it now I could have viewed read async here also and read both the address but I just wanted to show the other variation and apart from the read and read fast and async we have read single and read single or default now, as I mentioned, uh, let me first show the read fast async, which is going to behave the same way. So if I run, I'll get the exact same result this time. 
and you can see it's the exact same result now instead of read fast if i do read single this is going to fail why it's going to fail because read single expects that the query returns only one response so if i run this it's going to come and throw an exception here so you can see that it is throwing an exception sequence contains more than one element which is expected now here what i can do is select start from address and i can say limit one this is the easiest solution i could have done where id is equal to one also but i'm just going to limit one and run this and this time the single should work and you can see the single worked because since i limited one there is only one record set so i am able to call the read single async so these are the couple of implementation of query multiple async where i queried multiple items and from multiple items i can just do read and extract each of the record set which are part of my query and associate them with an appropriate managed data type now i could have more queries here if i had more tables but just for the purpose of this example i have created two queries from the two table so this is all i wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you are new to this channel and if you think you are getting value out of this channel please subscribe to the channel and thanks so much for watching this video